Concord, Massachusetts, the little town that keeps Concord from being Lexington, the hyphen as we call it sometimes. And I am also the co one of the three co-founders and presently the managing editor of an online news site called The Bedford Citizen, which you see on the screen. Sadly, it is summertime and much of our content that is serious and relating to actual board coverage of board meetings and issues within the town is just not there right now. Um, we have things like the 4-H Club uh, County Fair, which if any of you are looking for something to do tomorrow, I highly recommend going out to Westford. It's a stitch. Um, paving project that was finished yesterday after quite a long time. We had a bear in Bedford on August 3rd, and we just got the, the pictures. Um, and we've got football home team. Um, the reason we're talking about newspapers and WordPress uh, is about why to create a local news site. Do any of you, are any of you here because of the programming aspects of WordPress and, and the sort of technical details about how to do what with whom? I couldn't be more pleased. Because <laughs> I'm not either. Um, Bedford has a remarkable newspaper history. It started probably earlier, but the earliest I know, there was a paper called the Bedford Enterprise in 1919. Then we just got some clippings from our historical society with one of the stories that they uh, sent us about Lee Field, which was a precursor to Hanscom Field, which is an important part of our community. In the mid-60s, there was something called the Bedford Minuteman, which still exists, but in the mid-60s, it was locally owned and locally sourced. Uh, by that I mean the publisher, Bob Benoit, was a Bedford resident. He had not such a big background in journalism. It is rumored that he won the paper in a poker game. <laughs> but he had the smarts to hire people who knew what they were doing and who had journalism as one of their most, uh, well, cherished assets. So um, for many years, we had marvelous editors for the Minuteman, and we had a vibrant, wonderful paper that would have 30 or 40 stories on each, in each weekly issue. Now some of those stories were pretty minimal. Um, the kinds of things that you'll see alongside about the various different events that are coming up. But they were nonetheless stories and they connected to individuals or parts of the community who then felt an ownership of the paper. In ma -ma 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 -ma, yes, you, you heard that, you're right. Um, the Bedford Minuteman was bought out by Gatehouse. And I do not mean to disparage Gatehouse at all, just to say that they have a very different management strategy and are more inclined to bring in new young reporters who don't have a particular connection to the community and who tend not to stay very long because there's always a better offer out there because the offer they've got from Gatehouse really isn't all that good. Gatehouse publishes, according to their website, 97 dailies in 20 states and 198 papers like the Bedford Minuteman, which are paid subscription weekly papers. That would be good, except that there is that transition. There is that lack of connection between the editor of the paper and the community. You think the Boston Globe. Okay, that's our regional paper. The Globe has minimal, forgive me, David Dahl, my good friend, access to local news. There is There are three metro sections, which means that if you're a little town, the hyphen that keeps Concord from being Lexington, you're competing in the West region with places like Framingham and I don't know, what, 50, 60, 70, 80 more towns that goes out in their pot. So you're not going to get much unless you've got a really big deal going on through the Metro editions. They've been doing a Cape and the Islands um, section this summer, but that's mostly events and restaurants and to support the people who are going down to the Cape. For the last couple of years, they've had the Your Town <coughs> sites that have been attached to Boston.com, but in this most recent um, 
uh, iteration, indeed, those have kind of gone the way of all fine things. So, local stories really don't have much of a place to blossom. I've heard one of our audience is from Toronto, someone else is from Staten Island. How many of you are here in Massachusetts? Are, we have local people here? I'm good. So what do you do for local news? I, one of the things that I hope we can do is set up a situation so that I hear what your concerns are and then we'll talk about some possible solutions. Yes? I live in Cohasset and we have a gay house uh, paper, uh, the Cohasset Mariner. And it's, um, they're pretty good about local politics. A little too much, I think. Um, and the model they use does seem to work for this entire town. It's a small town. And, but I wonder how, um, how viable it would be as a standalone entity without the resources of the gate house. And so, you know, is the, I've, already, I've often pondered, pondered myself whether or not there's an opportunity or a need for another approach to um, local news. Um, and I have decided, no, they've been covering the town pretty well. Every little little league thing, every Cub Scout thing, they've been pretty good. Um, but I hear from other people who are in the sort of gatehouse umbrella. It's not so in every town. So I'm curious what you, what you have to say. Well, and, and that is a real concern. Now, your paper in Cohasset mm -hmm. has good coverage and you're pleased with it. But there are other towns where, um, and we, we're getting pretty good coverage in Bedford now, but we've had a time when we got started where the coverage was at best limited. Do, are any of the rest of you in Gatehouse communities, and how does Gatehouse work for you? <coughs> yes? Yeah, yeah you okay. again. Yeah, um, yeah, no, Gatehouse uh, does own the, uh, I live in Plymouth, Gatehouse owns the uh, Old Colony Memorial, which is the paper from, you know, I'm, I work in competition with them because I do run my own site down in that area. Um, but at the same time, the gate, the old colony's been around since like 1820. So it's been a long, been a long time. And in fairness to the coverage um, the, um, in the paper, it's still kind of a flagship paper for gate house in this area. It's not one of those towns, I mean, it's sort of the opposite of what you described. I'll defend them. It's sort of the opposite of what you described in Bedford. The, the staff has been there a long time. They're familiar with the town. Um, they have more than one reporter. You know, it's, you know, it's really it's one of their, I don't know how many other non dailies gate house treats like that, but it's always been sort of a, you know, given that sort of support by, by the company. I think, on the other hand, from my, from my point of view, what happens, and this is especially on the online, the wicked, the size of wicked local, which is Gate House's online um, product, is they're so obsessed with sort of feeding the beast of page clicks that it's very hard, or you know, page views and all those sort of generating traffic, that the site itself, Wicked Local Plymouth, drowns in information and stuff, news or feature or items that have nothing to do with Plymouth, because they're so desperate to keep churning up content part of my point of view is keeping it focused on, you know, I don't know what your rules are, but, you know, from my point where I, where I am, if it didn't happen, you know, <laughs> did not, you know if my site isn't, you know, isn't Manomet, and if it didn't happen in Manomet, or doesn't involve a person from Manomet, I don't care. I'm not interested. Well, don't, and bother me. don't bother me. Please. There you go. <laughs> well, and that's, that is certainly our focus, but it is entirely Bedford News. The gentleman from Manomet has said, that while there is a very viable, as in Cohasset, maybe we all need to move down to the South Shore, um, there's another viable gatehouse paper in uh, Plymouth, and we're doing the kinds of things that we're looking to do, and there you go. So, but the idea that there is a lot of other extra, if, I'm going to use the word extraneous, because it's non-town related stuff on the site, especially on the site. Yes. 
Yeah, my name is Chris Helms. I run JamaicaPlainNews.com. The Jamaica Plain is the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, neighborhood of Boston, for those of you who are. Yeah. Um, so I'd just be interested in that you guys are more established than me. I launched August, uh, let's see, April 3rd. So uh, just what's your advice for keeping uh, an online hyper-local thing going on as a going concern? I, mean, I don't want my project to flame out in the year. You well, and neither, really establishments. and neither do we. And and one thing to, to say is that we are all volunteers. We have been doing this, this, we've begun our third year on the 1st of July, and we have just gotten our 501c3. It took us that long to get our nonprofit status. So we will now begin to do some fundraising and application for grants. So it's been a hey, hanging on kind of thing between then and now. Um, you have to find people who have some passion. You have to have people who have something that they want to say and share. Um, the other part for us is a commitment that each of us, um, I am one of the original three. Um, Meredith McCulloch, who was Bedford's uh, town librarian for many years, followed the New England News Forum for a long time before 2009, and we think of her as our moral center. Meredith has uh, a clear sense of what a paper ought to be, what a local paper ought to be, and a commitment to local news as a foundation for democracy and the concept of citizen journalism. Kim Siebert, who we lost this time last year, well, actually in November, she finally her final stories were filed in November, was a remarkable reporter who covered three in-depth meetings in Bedford each week and wrote wonderful stories about them. So what I'm talking about is uh, planning board, finance committee, and selectmen, and school committee on alternate weeks. We are struggling to make up that loss. Kim was a big, oh my god, you can't be serious, kind of loss. Um, but we're making it up now by crowdsourcing pieces and saying, you're at the school committee meeting. What do you think? Let us know what you think. We're using more content from organizations. We have three levels of article. One would be a compiled story, and that would be where we know something is interesting to the community, and we go to various different websites and kind of pull together bits and pieces and um, I guess you'd call it aggregate a story. So if you see something on the citizen that says compiled by, you know that there really wasn't anybody who had, you know, a, a single a single point of view. Although the person who edits that story brings things together to make a central uh, to make a central point and to have it be right. We also have stories that are submitted by, and so that's uh, for instance when the um, school superintendent has a letter to the community that goes only to parents. We ask if we may please share it with the community and those letters go out as submitted by. Um, actually, that was one of our, our biggest to, da to date, yes. Um, there was a situation in Bedford last spring where anti-Semitic symbols and text and difficulties were in the schools. And we, if you will, broke that story through a letter from the superintendent who saw us as a, or who saw the citizen, not us individually, saw the citizen as a, the best possible way to get things out to the community because we have terrific turnaround speed, absolutely outstanding. Give it to us, we post it for the most part. And we also have better visuals than a print newspaper has, or the capacity for better visuals. Um, and then we have the stories that are written by an individual who is reporting for us, either reporting a meeting, or uh, there's a wonderful young man named Dan Broskell, who is a young, he has a young family in town, and he writes, he's a columnist who writes about what it's like to have a young family in Bedford. And his stuff is wonderful. So that goes up as by Dan Broskell. Um, crowdsourcing without Kim feels like a real strategy for us. 
because we don't have the wherewithal to hire reporters. We may, once we get our fundraising piece in, uh, the idea of having a paid internship feels right to us, but we don't have, we haven't raised the money yet, so that's kind of on hold. And the more people who have a hand in making the system, or to make, making the citizen real on a day-to-day -day basis, increases their feeling of content and connection to the town, and it's a synergistic piece that way. Um, we also, the three of us, Kim and uh, Meredith and I, had a long-standing commitment to the League of Women Voters. Now that may sound really old-fashioned to a lot of you, but we're old. We are genuinely old women. Well, maybe not old women, but we're, we get those deals on the bus. <laughs> At any rate, yeah, when we started, we added up for the three of us. I think it was something like 125 years living in Bedford. I mean, it's a community we know, or think we know. We know, but I, I take that back. We know a part of it. Bedford is changing. Bedford isn't the community that I moved into in 1968. Every small house that gets sold gets replaced by a behemoth. And so the values, not the values, but the, ooh, I'm not sure what I would call it, the, the concerns of someone who has spent north of a million dollars to buy a house in Bedford are very different from mine when I paid $18,250 in 1968. Yeah, I can't buy a car for what I paid for my house, but we're not going to go there. That's not what we're here to talk about. But the house as an investment is turning up as a real concern among our community. And the extent to which there are challenges to that in the schools, and that shows itself in uh, what sort of music I'm wanting to use? So you've got development coming in. We have a large parcel of land in Bedford that has 17 houses that were owned by the Coast Guard. Small, single-family, military housing kind of places. And it's for sale now. And Bedford is looking to see what it will look like, what kind of development will go in there. And people who have paid a lot of money for the house, their house, and they see the schools, needing to add more classrooms, needing to go to modular classrooms, say, wait a minute, do we want all these new people in town? Now that doesn't mean that they're being ugly citizens. They're just saying, you know, how much can we really, how much more can we do? And that's a very different paradigm than we saw in the 19, late 1960s and early 70s when there was an active fair housing committee in Bedford who was looking to bring people into town. So things have changed, and we're hoping to change with them. Well, I mean, to reflect that change. But getting back to the League of Women Voters, the premise that we operate under is flat news. Now that sounds, again, pretty boring, doesn't it? But what I mean by that is when something happens in Bedford, um, for instance, a fire, we don't necessarily, there was a fatal fire in Bedford the first year we did all this, and instead of reporting the fire, what we did was report on the effect of the fire on the nearby school. They had to uh, take all the kids and put them someplace else for the day because of the air pollution. Um, there was another house fire, and instead of writing about the house fire, we talked about the community effort to assist the person who was burned out of her home. Um, and we want to report what is going on in a meeting without any real editorial content. I mean, we're not, we're not there to say, this is good, that's bad, and make value judgments. We're there to get the news out, to get the facts out, and to let people make up their own minds. And that's the sort of lead piece that, um, that all of us have, have come from. Um, yeah. So we're talking about things from a Bedford perspective. If you go down in our site, you'll see that the other day we ran a story about the Simpsons because they're 25 years old and one of our editors thinks they're a terrific thing and there's this immense um, marathon, uh, Simpsons marathon, 
Well, one of our editors said, there's a small town, here's a small town, how do they work together? How does Bedford look like Springfield? Are there ways that Bedford can learn from Springfield? Or should Bedford, Springfield, Springfield be looking at, learning from Bedford? So all of that is to say that it's summertime, and while the, uh, <laughs> the paper in Plymouth may be looking for content, so are we. But we, brought, we managed to bring it back to a little bit of a Bedford focus. And last year we reported on a dog's birthday party, so... <laughs> <laughs> you know, July is July, and August is even worse. Yes? I see that you allow comments on your, uh, on your website. Yes, we do. Uh, how do you monitor that? Um, well, we interestingly have been doing it now for two years. And when we started to, at the beginning of our first year, there was quite a controversial development project and a lot of cranky neighbors. And we were getting pretty virulent comment. And before we posted any, I mean, they came like in a, in a glut. Well, this is one technical piece I can tell you about WordPress. If you go to, if you're using WordPress comment piece, you can tell what um, IP address the comments come from. So we had nine comments from ostensibly nine individuals at nine different email addresses, but they all came from the same machine. So it's like, ah, uh, yes, okay, how about that? So we developed a strategy of taking each comment from someone whose email address we don't know and writing to them and saying, we're perfectly content to protect your anonymity, but we do need to know that you're real. And so every time a comment comes in, we send that message if it's an unknown email address. And I'd say 70% come back as being real comments. 30% just either don't answer or come from somewhere out in the sky. People who would like to just have a little venom out in the, out in the world. And doesn't it get too nasty? Well, I think once, in the, sometimes, and yes, we've, we've, there, there are a couple of our commenters that I would like to take out behind the woodshed. But you don't. Well, I mean, it's a free speech. It's, there's, I can't really do that. I mean, the only, the, the only thing I think I can do as, as a publisher, as an editor, is make sure that the person who is speaking owns up to being a real person making that comment. And if someone wants to own up to being a real person making that comment and show himself to be even under an alias, someone with whom I don't agree, how should we do that? that, then, you know, I, 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 I can't make that value judgment for somebody. And then you'll find that some of these cranky people have other cranky people who um, agree with them, and then you get a little conversation going. I'd like to see much more commenting going. Um, but, again, short of seating it with people and saying, would you comment for me, please? I'm not sure that I can do that. Yes? I'm sorry? What incentive do you have for people to submit an article or a picture? People who do photography normally, who might want to submit pictures, or maybe part of a historical society of Bedford, or you know, something that people would actually want to read in the community. We actually go out and ask. We are we are the most blatant. <laughs> Hi, would you like to write for us? No, I mean, seriously, you know, you're, you're out in the community and you're doing, all of us are involved in various different other things beyond the citizen. And so it is our mission, if you will, to say to the fifth grade, uh, the, we have three middle, three uh, elementary schools in Bedford, uh, K through two, three through five, junior, and then the junior high, or the middle school and the high school. Um, going to the principal at the three to five, you know, age three to five. So, do you guys have anything you want to write for us? And so we've gotten some wonderful stories. We have a connection to the Bedford Photography Group through Bedford Center for the Arts. We get, the only thing that's tricky about photography is when a good photographer says, an audience, what you get is like 500 pictures <laughs> of one event, which are not necessarily <laughs> well defined one to the other. So uh, that's the problem I, I want to, uh, to do. We've, we've started saying, if you want to submit pictures, 
no more than 20, please edit them yourself and send it to us through Dropbox. We've got one over here and then here. Uh, yes. Oh! You kind of <laughs> oh, I was hoping I could get out without saying that. Were you familiar with it before you started? Well, not really, no. Okay, so in 2009, Meredith and I were talking about the idea of citizen journalism. And there is a WordPress.com site out there that I think three people have looked at. jmcct.wordpress.com And it is a place where we collected our notes when we first began to think of this. And I could do it. It looked real. I don't have any technical anything. I am not, your, I am not one of those people out there. And um, yet, that's another part of what I want to say to this particular group. WordPress gives people who have intent the capacity to make that intent real. So, lo and behold, we went through from jmcct.wordpress.com to a small site that lasted not very long and was largely successful, the Bedford Town, the Bedford Town Taxi .com, picking up news and carrying it around town. And uh, now to the Bedford Citizen. This is a stock theme. It is available on WordPress.com. It's called Vigilance from Theme Foundry. Uh, two, you, about a year and a half ago, we started, because our traffic began to pick up, we started getting the ads that WordPress, because they need to keep themselves afloat, we started getting these sort of random ads, and people were saying to us, well, um, you're volunteers, but you have ads, you must be getting money from, from those ads. We're like, well, no, we don't, we don't, we don't. And so, rather than paying WordPress $30 to suppress the ads, we said, we must go to a self-hosted site. Which actually was a good thing to do. There is a fellow in town who is a GoDaddy wannabe on a very small scale. And he was vested with the magic of helping us to host this self-hosted site. And there's another young woman, uh, Paula Gilardi, who you'll see down at the end of our, uh, when you get way down to the end, who is technologically advanced. She also comes to WordPress, but she's coming home from Hawaii today. I couldn't get her to come home a day early to come in and, and talk with me. But at any rate, um, so we have some technical backup in town. You know, people who can help us, who helped us migrate from the WordPress.com to what we have. And this site was never meant to stay this way. This was a, an experiment that I put up to see among our board whether it was really going to work or not. And everybody said, oh, this is really good. So we've been trying to make the theme fit our new needs. Um, I would like for myself to have a more magazine kind of New York Times looking where there are lots of different categories out on the same page and you can more easily see what is out there. Now if you go, oh my hands are sweaty, this is not good. Da, 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 da. See, I mean, that's just way too long. But if you go up here, you'll see our various different categories and the stories that we've posted over time. And um, I'd like to have, say, all or, or some of our charter review, well, the tar charter review wouldn't be hard, but some of our events calendar stuff in one place and, you know, be able to have things move around. But lo and behold, we've got what we've got, and we're going on hiatus for next week. We take uh, the last week of August off each year. <laughs> I'm doing nothing next week. Nothing, I tell you, nothing. Um, so there were a couple of other questions. Yes? Yeah, uh, is everybody a volunteer how you finance your site? Does anybody get paid? None. Nobody gets paid. How do you build up your traffic? How do you, how wide is your traffic? Um, How do you market your site to be, to be known by, by people? Well, bear in mind that we have a very small market area. Bedford is a town of 14,000, 15, 13,000, 4,000 4, households, just shy of 4,000 households. We 
uh, have about a 25% household penetration rate. But bear in mind, we've lived in town for a very long time. We came into it with a good mailing list. We post every story to, we post the story to the website. It immediately goes out on Twitter and it's posted <coughs> to, Word, uh, not to WordPress, to Facebook. You, Facebook, Twitter, do you do news plus? Do we do? Like you send to, not spamming, but send to uh, your subscribers? Say that one more time, I didn't care. You have subscribers? Oh, well, and that's the best part. <laughs> yeah. So, when we did the town taxi, one of the things that we did was every Sunday take all of the stories that we had written and send an email out. Now, some people think that that's the Bedford Citizen. It comes at 7.30 every Sunday morning, and what I will be doing this afternoon before my hiatus begins is going home and writing that little sucker so it goes out at 7.30 tomorrow morning. It goes out to about a quarter of the households in Bedford. We have now, we look at it, was, last time I looked, it was 787 Facebook followers and a few more than 300 uh, Twitter followers. And a lot of that has been organic growth. One person sharing with another and, you know, sort of letting the, uh, well, crowdsourcing our, our marketing. Uh, but I think probably more to the point is that Sunday email because you can't see it so much here but in the course of the actual year if you go to a finance committee meeting usually there are three or four stories that kind of stand on their own our habit has been to write each of those stories individually rather than creating a long document that has sections but when somebody you know one may go up on one day Tuesday and Thursday if you don't see all of those together, you don't kind of get a picture of what the Finance Committee has done. So the Sunday summary pulls all of those stories together and has links to each of the individual stories. And that's probably our biggest marketing tool. <laughs> are, are you going? Uh, no. no it's, <laughs> it's just hot in here? Okay. No, no, just, no, 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 so it is 2.02. Is that our time? 2.15. All right. We have time for more questions. Uh, we, we brought our own photographer. Oh, we are so bad. David, what's up? Well, I, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a subscriber. And uh, if, if you would scroll all the way up to the top of this page, there's, there's that feature there where you can put your name and your email in to get that Sunday synopsis you mentioned. Yeah. But there's also a daily, um, just a little, it, it, it appears to be a headline and then the first few sentences Yeah, see, I know that I, I don't have anything to do with that, so it's not even on my radar. That is a, a function of, the, remember I told you this fellow who said he would be our GoDaddy? Well, he is a big Google Plus web savvy, we're grateful to have him guy. And he has taken us off of constant contact and onto this um, email server that produces, on, based on the RSS feeds, all the stories that go out on a given day. Now the other thing about that is that I heard the other day that if you're doing a blog, you should a news blog, you should have three posts a day. Or no, three. Posts three a week. Three, well, three, what is it? Three, three posts a week. That's three right. posts a week, and they should. But but then they, if you're doing them all in one day, they should be three hours apart. I didn't hear about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, my two blogs, um, it's random when I post on both of them. I post more on one of them than the other one. But um, I, I do get traffic, but the second one not as much traffic as the first one. What's the first one's over? Well, I, I, am a, I am a big um, proponent of multiple channels. So Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest. Actually, we're thinking of a Pinterest board because we have some fabulous photographs and, like David, fabulous photographers who are working for us, as long as they don't send us that many. Um, and to get those photographs up on Pinterest. It isn't where I thought I would ever go, but the other side of it is a lot of people follow Pinterest and it is a visual medium. 
And so that could, you know, that may be one of the things we, we do as an extension area for the spring, or for the you know, fall coming. I'll be so much better after vacation. What else can I tell you, or what else would you like to know? Yes? Yeah, on a tactical level, how do you handle uh, post scheduling and editorial scheduling? <coughs> like that obviously there's, there's, there's breaking news that you want to have go out right immediately, you know. But um, curious, curious how you handle that, especially as you're spreading things through the summer months. <laughs> Got a dog birthday party? I'll put it up this afternoon. I could make one up. There you go. It's a fine thing. A fine thing. Yellow journalism. <laughs> very best, but that's a bad time. Um, <laughs> so anyhow, um, it, a lot of it is in my head and has been from the time we started because we, we do, when Kim and Meredith and I were doing this, we would have a telephone call three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, um, to sort of talk about what was out there, how we were going to cover it, when it was going to appear, and when the stories were going to come in. When Kim left, and then also our my other co-founder, Meredith McCulloch, had a very serious spate of illness this winter. And so I was kind of going, sure. And our board, we have a board of 15 people and an executive board of five. And the executive <laughs> board stepped up. And so now we talk on Tuesday and Thursday morning in a conference call. Um, and so we talk about what's, com what's coming. And I just keep a list. And also, the other thing that works for me is I use, see this, I'm old. I use Outlook, which I'm sure hardly anybody does anymore. We have Outlook at work. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry? We have Outlook at work. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. So anyway, one of the things that you can do with Outlook is, for the most part, create folders for things to go in, and you can have them come in and go to the particular folder. So I know that anything that comes from the schools is going to be an article. I know that anything that comes from Middlesex Community College is going to be an event. I know that the, I've asked our writers to please put publish as the first word in any in the email that they send me with the attachment with their story. So it goes right into the right folder and I can just go to those folders and see. And beyond that it's a paper list. So uh, afterwards I'd love to, I, I learned about a plug-in at, at another word camp and it actually gives you an editorial calendar. Oh! Oh, see, this is why I'm here. I learned about a calendar at lunch and a, and, and a calendar. I, we'll talk. Yeah. We'll absolutely talk. And, and anybody else who has... has uh, yeah, I was just there. looking at his post, post calendar. Um, and I, I think the plugin is something a bit different. But. Okay, well, let's do that as soon as we're done. Yes. But this oh. means what you said right now, that they don't update. So who write the article, they don't update the website by themselves and find the categories. Is it you or somebody from the board? We have, we have, we have done that so far. Now, Doris Smith is our political writer, and she will be one of the first people who will do the direct posting. And we're kind of rolling it out to see how it works. We've really only been using a lot of extraneous, or not extraneous, external reporters for, well, since January, really. We had pretty good, I mean, pretty consistent how things came. Um, the idea of getting the community to take that next step, we're gonna, pi we're gonna pilot that with Doris between now and November. And based on what we learn, we'll roll that out into the larger world. You didn't know that, did you? <laughs> <laughs> we had a question from the back. Um, this week, WBUR did a segment on vanishing neighbors. My question is, can you point to anything in your website where you're trying to rekindle a sense of connection at the neighborhood level, or do you have a vision for that? And if anybody in the room has tools for that, I'd love to know, too. Well, the neighborhood piece, one of the things we found the first year that we were doing this is that events were not really making it into the Minuteman. The, that's our gatehouse paper, the, the paper paper. Um, they would get there, but they get kind of way off into the back end of the paper and they're small and people just read the stuff on the front page for the most part. They don't really dig in. So we have our, our um, calendar of events here. After a lot of trial and error, um, I'm kind of thrilled with it. One of the things I found out, you guys may or not know, 
with most of the new versions of WordPress, you can use a PDF as a piece of media and upload it the way you would a photograph. And this is what happens. See where it says Bedford Knits? This is the PDF that came from Bedford Knits. Wow, which button is that? It's not. It's just there. You just you you just have a PDF. It, you, you, have it, you have a PDF, you upload it as if it were an, uh, an image, and it comes right up. Because usually when I do that, it means a link. Well, I'll we'll, we'll create one and I'll show you how it works for us. Okay. But you know, you just, you, you have it out there, the PDF, and then you just upload it through your media thing that goes out and pulls the media. So you just have to make sure that it's open to the new window. And it doesn't cover the, the Well, there is a place where you want to make sure that it opens in its own window, yes. Or these were the ones that we did at first, and I would go in and um, fix it so that it had a link in returns to the Bedford Citizen. But then I found out that if, when you're creating that link, that it opens in a new window, it's, I just have to remember to do it. Oh, the window. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty exciting, and it, it just comes right up, and you've got, and, and that way people see their stuff. When somebody has created a poster for an event, and it then turns into a text story, lots of lines, I mean, maybe it looks good, but it's different from their being able to see their poster, their artwork, and it's a whole lot simpler for us. A whole lot simpler for us. Yes. Um, I, it's uh, just a, a, from my perspective, it looks like you've done a wonderful job of sort of integrating and reflecting your community, and that seems to be what, you know, where, why you, you've been erased, you know. But I guess I'm curious to hear you say there's no money in it, and I, I wonder about your thoughts on, uh, on monetizing, on the potential of monetizing. No, it isn't. We have now our 501c3, which we just got three weeks ago, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. And at first, people said, oh, let us give you money. And we thought, they probably mean 10 or $15, which is going to expiate their guilt, but isn't going to be real helpful to us, except in the very short term. We don't want to do advertising. We all have a sort of more channel two kind of focus about uh, asking people to become members, if you will, or subscribers or sustainers or whatever. And we all have a lot of fundraising in our backgrounds. Oh, I hope. So now that we've got our 501c3, we can go out and we can get grants. And we can, um, you know, ask people for substantial donations. And if they're um, itemizing their taxes, then we can offer them that uh, reward or option. So I don't know how it's going to work. I know that if you'd like to look at my checkbook, <laughs> you can see the, the um, impact of doing this pretty much full time for a couple of years. Um, but as I said, I moved into an $18,000 house in 1968. So I don't have some of the imperatives that people who do not have that opportunity, didn't have that opportunity. So, you were poor. But the fun of what you say, I mean, the nonprofit model is interesting because the, what you really are doing is providing a community service. I mean, would you suggest that local news sites actually could potentially focus on that, a nonprofit model? Well, there, there is, do we have about two minutes? Two minutes. Two minutes. The 501, uh, the categories for which you can get 501c3 status do not include journalism. I think that has something to do with the number of people who say, I'll have a newspaper. And they, you know, it's really because they're a sort of a self-aggrandizing model rather than a community focus. They will, however, give you 501c3 status as an educational institution. So we feel that we are doing community education. The idea of bringing the community together is another part of that, but the education is what we got the 501c3 about. And we also are looking always for interns. And so we have a, a week <laughs> present internship program. 
And if any of you, see now this is where she gets bold again, if any of you would like to come and write with us, we would be delighted to work with you. So, um, what can I tell you except to say that I really appreciate how easy you have made this for me. I hope that I have brought you some things you hadn't thought about. And I would encourage you to, to the extent it is appropriate for you, to go out and create something and let me know about it. Thank you very, very much. <laughs>